things we've noticed in the last two years, and we're actually part of shaping it, is that there is an interest in deeper learning, we call it. Uh, the six C's, character education, citizenship, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity. Uh, those are things uh, where students now are, are studying problems in the world, as, in their neighborhood, as part of their curriculum and incorporating that. So there's, there are bigger things at stake. This requires very different pedagogy, that the students are much more active about defining and participating in their learning. Uh, they work with each other. The teacher has to be even more sophisticated to enable students to work this way. Really enjoyed and it really resonated when he talked about um, students making sure that students are, um, are involved in what is actually occurring and they are constantly giving feedback on their learning and involved in their learning. There is a need to change to respond to the changing environment so it's no longer good enough for teachers to share and impart their knowledge. We have to get that active learning happening, personalised learning. And so they're the things that we can all hook into. So these gave some strategies of how to make these work in schools and then how for us to work as a partnership and the likes across schools. We're in the people industry, either way, whether you're engaging with learners, um, building with staff, working with community. And so Fullen has a really good perspective around building social capital. Um, he talks about, um, in addition to decisional capital, you know, in, in what way do we support the staff we're working with to make decisions about their work. We focus on new teaching and learning pedagogy to use that language and so we're building up the individual capacity of teachers to be more effective with their students and then one of the big new winners is uh, uh, we call it collaborative expertise or collective efficacy whatever you want to use it's very clear when teachers get together in a focused way and they help each other and they zero in on the student needs and they look at the impact and they correct and get better at it, you get big school-wide results. A number of key points, one of them is around that collaborative culture and that is tapping into the power of the group to change the group. Um, and associated with that is this idea of having a, a, a level of a voluntary nature of doing things with staff. If teachers have that opportunity to actually work with each other and further develop, that the accountability that, that you can manage to, to um, gain from that is actually a more powerful than from an external uh, accountability. That if it's coming from that group for change, you are more likely to have accountability and the change occur. We pick up these uh, sticky phrases, I guess I'll say, uh, phrases that capture something that's strong in a way that people say, yeah, that's it. So one of them is if you want to change the group, use the group to change the group. So now we're not just t changing individuals, you actually get people to work together and because they work together in a certain way, they start to change themselves. The leaders enable that, they pull it out. So that's very important. I'd love to build personally a learning framework for our college so we have a shared understanding of what good learning looks like at our, our, and then that can be a frame for us all to work from. And he used this idea of being able to walk the, uh, talk the walk. In other words, we really all have a deep understanding of it. So you can't just impose that, it's got to be bought in. When you're implementing those changes, it's not necessarily, um, th there are going to be times when you're going to feel confused and where it's going to not necessarily be clear uh, uh, with what you're doing, and that's a relief to hear. There are times where it's clear where you're heading, but there are times when you do feel like you're in a fog, um, and the fact that he was saying that's how they felt when they were implementing changes was really quite reassuring, that that's something which, which can be felt and that it's okay and that you just need to work through. Um, he talked earlier about the use of time, that sometimes, um, meet, well, I guess if I use the analogy, you can be in a meeting where time slows down because it actually is draining versus being in a meeting or in a team where the energy is such that you feel much more creative. And that's what we want to get out of this, that people's time is used wisely and creatively. I had them start with the day, identify a challenge you're facing in your school. Uh, so uh, they did that in groups of three, so three different people uh, randomly together are saying that. At the end of the day, I've said, okay, you said that challenge at the beginning of the day. What have you learned from the day that you can use that, uh, to address that? And then I asked them to push forward, what, you, what action are you going to take? So there's uh, you know, 150 people, whatever. They're going to take a variety of action, but some of it will be individual. I've got to do this or that in my role. But uh, other parts of it, they'll be in, they'll be in roles where they're working with groups of uh, other leaders. So it'll be the collectivity that takes action. So I want individual action and collective action coming from today. And I think we've got it.